live at five on Thursday, October 6th. 6th. It is. And we have a very special guest. Rebecca, Rebecca Naomi Jones, Jones is in the house. Yay! So let's get started with the news. So, well, I'm going to start with the thing that Rebecca Naomi Jones will like the most. Yeah. I think I would know about this. The American Idiot movie got a green light from HBO. Of course, Rebecca was called What's Her Name in American Idiot. Right? And Were you upside down? You were upside down. No, that was Christina. That was Christina. The other brown girl. Oh, please, don't even start with me. <laughs> I know my American Idiot girls. Anyway, Billy Joe Armstrong plans to play St. Jimmy. Yeah. And uh, that's some exciting news for American Idiot yeah. and Green Day fans. But we have some other news. news. We have a lot going other on today. News. Other news. We have a new Patty in School of Rock. Yes, we do. That's Becky Galsvig, and she begins on October 10th, Monday. Yeah, and so she obviously replaces Megan Paris, who's off to Cats. So Megan then has like a week to get herself into Cats, and she begins in Cats on the 17th of October. Rosabella. Yeah. There she goes. Uh, Mary Beth Peel has joined the cast of Anastasia. Yeah. Right now she's in, say it for us with your French. Uh, La Liaison Dangereuse. I love it. I love it when you do that. Um, someone by the name of Daniel Radcliffe. But who's he? Don't know. Uh, but apparently, he's, he's going to be Rosencrantz. Is he in um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead at the Old Vic in London? They announced the rest I of their season. I love that play. It's the 50th anniversary of one of Tom Stoppard's finest. Such works. a great play. So good. The minor characters in Hamlet. I think you probably already yeah. knew that. <laughs> they also announced that they're doing a musical for my pal Connor McPherson. It's called Girl from the North Country, and it features Bob Dylan songs, and that will be next uh, summer. The Old Vic is an incredible venue, does amazing work, and of course that's where Groundhog Day recently that's premiered. That's right, so Andy Carr, ladies and gentlemen. one to watch what goes on there. It can either transfer to West End or even to Broadway. Look at you, mm. jumping the gun. Uh, what was the name of that play, Les Liaisons? Dangerous. Dangerous. Your That's French our French. Than mine. Not really. There, our French face is from that play, Elena Campouris. She's fabulous. I interviewed her. Gorgeous. The meet and greet. Very oh, pretty. Bubbling over. So with that's life. our French wonderful. face. We also have Reed Carney from the upcoming Rocky Horror Picture Show remake, which will air on Fox on October twentieth. He is on Show People with Paul Lund Torek. He plays Riff Raff, of course, obviously. Um, we have two meet and greets. You did one. I, I did, did one. Um, I went to Ride the Cyclone this morning, um, which is a new musical MCC theatre starring Taylor Loudman, Alex Weiss, and more. That video is going to go up very shortly. Um, and it, it looks, I mean, it looks fascinating. Yeah. Ensemble piece, great reviews in Chicago. It's coming in and out of New York. This one is one to watch, I think. Always, we love mm. Taylor Loudman. We do. Um, speaking of Taylor Loudman, yeah, Ariana DeBose, did you see what I did there? They run bring it on. Uh, her second episode of Bronx Bullet is up on the site. Super fun. She tells about her morning ritual and she goes to visit her friends at Hamilton. Well, I so, mean, I mean, anytime you get works. to go backstage at Hamilton, that's fun. Yeah. Um, I did a meet and greet with the cast of This Day Forward, which is the new Nikki Silver play at the Vineyard Theater. Nikki Silver is hilarious. He said he was inspired to write the play by other people's success. <laughs> He just wanted to get a Pulitzer or something. I don't know what he's going through. Um, Whose Holiday has been called off? That's a Matthew this Lombardo is interesting. play. Yeah, it's a parody of The Grinch, and apparently it's been called off because of rights issues. Hmm. hmm. But it was supposed to star our former vlogger and Tony nominee Jennifer Smudge, so maybe they'll work that out. We don't know. Maybe, but she's got a big job coming up. She's, she's about to join Bette Midler on Broadway. Yeah, so she's going to be okay. She's fine. She's fine. Yeah. Um... Hamilton's Oak will be on SVU, along with Will Swenson. Yeah, same episode. Amazing. And Corey Cotton is also going to be yeah. on SVU. So that's leading odds in today, so check out the dates, because they're listed on there. Yes, and Matt Damon, also on odds and ends, surprised Adina Menzel on Kimmel, and it is a very funny yeah. story that has to do with Wicked, so yeah. definitely check that definitely out. Definitely check that one out. I'm going to get out of here, yeah. because oh, Rebecca Naomi Jones is here. Rebecca Naomi Jones is here. Jones is in the house. Doing this. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm loving the hat. I'm feeling a bit jealous, actually. I had, a, I had a hat like that once, but then I, I got lost. I think oh. Sierra Boggess walked off with it. Oh, Long rude. story. <laughs> Long story. Now, you're in a big hit. You're off Broadway at Atlanta Theatre Company's Linda Gross Theatre, doing Marie and Rosetta. Yes. Extending all over the place. Yeah. And it, I guess it's a dream come true for any actor. It's a world premiere. Yeah, it's a so world premiere. Cool. It's a great play. Yeah. It's a play with music, but um, I mean, one could call it a musical, but it, it really it has a lot of text, and um, the story is very, very important. Um, now, is it a two-hander? It, it is. It is a two-hander. It's a two-hander, and not only that, it is one long scene. Wow. So there's never any blackout. So um, so it's a lot. It's a lot of work for us. All right. So for those who know nothing about the show, talk to me about the world of Maria Rosetta. Where's it set? Well, um, it's 
1946, uh, it actually tells a story about two uh, real life women, um, historical figures who unfortunately uh, don't have their due fame. Mm. Um, Sister Rosetta Tharp was a, a one time famous gospel blues singer uh, in the 30s and 40s, and um, when her career was having a bit of a denouement, she uh, discovered this younger woman, who's um, me, who's me uh, and uh, took her on as a, as a, a co-pilot yeah. for a while um, to try and revive her career. And so this play is a, um, it's, it's a fictional uh, sort of look into their first rehearsal together. And you work with Keisha Lewis on this. Yes. Very, very intense, I guess, the whole rehearsal process and just everything working with her. Yes, yes, incredibly intense. I mean, the play itself is, is very intense. It's very, very funny and joyous, but then it goes into some, some really dark stuff. And it's, it's also what I love about it is um, it's like an intellectual, it's like a tete-a-tete, -tete, the whole play. I mean, there's so much that we are discussing and debating. Um, our characters come from really different kinds mm. of... Um, sort of moral landscapes, or not really moral, but uh, just the way that we, are, the guidelines by which we uh, sort of govern our lives are very different, yeah. and the way that Marie has been brought up to believe um, in terms of what's right and what's wrong and how you're supposed to conduct yourself is very different from what Rosetta believes. And so it, the play is a lot of us sort of butting heads and trying to kind of meet each other at this middle ground. And I'm guessing audiences can sort of relate to that relationship somewhat because it's so different. Yeah, well that's what's so fascinating about it. I mean, it's these two African American rock and rollers who are like, you know, with these God-fearing women from the 1940s, which is already kind of a, a radical thing. But what's so surprising about it is how people from all walks of life, all ages, all races are finding this play. Yeah. Um, personal to them. It's, yeah. it's, it's shocking to me. And also the, the people that Rosetta worked with, I mean, I didn't know anything about it, but she worked with Elvis Presley. I mean, talk to me a bit about the she, list, because it's uh, amazing. She inspired, like, all of our yeah. rock gods. I mean, Chuck Berry, um, Hendrix, Elvis. Yeah. Um, I mean, pretty much anyone in the rock world, Bob Dylan, everybody in that world knows who she is and is like, oh, yeah, well, she's, she's the one who first did this. She's the one who first did, did this. So many of the rock and roll yeah. geniuses um, sort now, of emulated her. David wants to know which performers inspire you. So oh following on from that question. Um, well, I love, um, I love Marin Ireland. I know it's like such a random thing for me because we don't do anything, you know, like I don't do anything that she does. But um, I just, every time I watch her, I just think that she's, um, she's so deep inside her character and she's so intense and quirky and fun and funny but also really interesting and fascinating and she's not afraid to make bold choices. But I think you make bold choices. I mean somebody here just saying I loved you with Yitzhak. Oh thank and you. But person. You, you really have haven't you? I mean you, you, you've managed to do that. In your yeah career. I've been really lucky. Is that, that conscious? Or? Yeah it is yeah. conscious. I think it's both. I think um, I, I think it's certainly conscious to try and play a bunch of different roles that um, feed me creatively in a different way, certainly. I mean, I think you can't really sustain this kind of work unless you're turned on by it. And yeah. so, you know, you always have to try and find something new and learn something new from, from the work. And I think, you know, it helps that I'm sort of like ambiguously ethnic and ambiguous in a lot of, you Your know. mom's Jewish, right? Yes. And your dad's African-American. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that gives you, gives you a way into all, yeah. all sorts. Yeah, yeah. All, the, all the neuroses and the oppression. <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> um, do, I mean, do, do you have, I mean, do your parents love what you do and seeing everything? Or, yeah, or? Um, my father passed away in two thousand eight, so but thank you. But um, but he was a musician. He actually oh, okay. um, was the music longtime music director of an oldies do up group called the Cadillacs. So is that where the voice comes from? Yeah, it sure is. Because my mom loved her to death. She is artistic, but not so much a singer. Um, and um, but she's an amazing photographer. Yeah. So my parents, um, my parents are artists, and they were always incredibly supportive. So when did you know you wanted to act? Probably quite young, if you came up. Yeah, quite young. With that background. Yeah, I um, I started singing. I fell in love with music first, and I always wanted to write songs and mm -hmm. perform songs. And then suddenly, sometime in the sixth grade, um, uh, my friend Claude Kelly in middle school uh, dragged me to the auditions for the fifth and sixth grade production of Jungle Book. 
And um, I thought it was just going to be the worst and the most nerdy thing. And um, and I fell in love with acting during the audition. I just remember like reading the sides for Bagheera the Panther, and I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> so and that, that was it. Yeah, that kind of was it. Do you have any advice for any kids watching who, who sort of, they think they want to pursue acting? Yeah, I do. I always think uh, the most important thing that you can do is be a good person. Uh, and... Uh, continue to be curious about other people and not just concerned with yourself uh, and what you can get from other people. Because um, the more curious you are, the more educated you are, and the more you understand people and know people, and uh, and that will help you become a better actor because you have more to work with. And, um, and also it's just, honestly, the more I'm in this business, the more I, I find out, of course it's about talent and hard work, but it's also... Who do you want to be in a room with all the time? Who do you want to be creating with and um, vulnerable with and able to do your best with because they are open and creative uh, and kind to you as well? That's, yeah, it's amazing. I think, I think you're absolutely right as well, speaking to a lot of performers. It's how they get work. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah, be kind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so have you got any dream roles? Gosh, um, put it, if we put it out there. So Norm Lewis for years told us he wanted to play Phantom on Broadway and he manifested it. That's amazing. And it happened to Sutton Foster recently as well. She spent years saying she wanted to do Sweet Charity oh, and is now yes. doing Sweet Charity. Yeah, so we, put, we, can, we, we can magic this up, secret Oh gosh, I don't know. I feel like I've been really lucky to not have dream roles because I, I've been really lucky to play all these sort of yeah. new yeah, roles. New works, yeah. Um, I don't know. i got to think on that one. Um... I don't know. Okay, we'll part that for a minute. American Idiot's going to be um, a movie. Yes, it is. Um, is that thrilling? I mean, it's thrilling, but it's also like, no. what can I do in this movie? You know, like I texted Billy Joe this morning and I said, <laughs> how about if I at least can play like the girl who's like got a grimace, who's like checking people's IDs at the door and like stamping their hands to be like, yeah, you're 21. Like, can I at least be her? Can I be like a curmudgeon hipster? Yeah, that works. <laughs> oh, and if he gets to do it, I mean, I know he wrote it and stuff. I mean, he's, he's yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess, I but, guess. Yeah. I mean, what about all of us guys? Can we be office workers at the facility on East 12th Street? You definitely need a cameo. Mm -hmm. I believe sort. so. Yes. I think that that certainly that shouldn't be outside the realms of possibility I at all. I think so too. I think, I think yes. so too. That dream role. There we are. We've sorted out the dream role. Maybe I can be like, what's her name's like, fun friend who is older. <laughs> and that, so that is your Twitter handle, and it's sort of stuck, yes. hasn't it? You've not yes. changed it. That's you've true. Gone, you've gone with it. I've thought about changing Rebecca's her name, but it is her name. <laughs> so, <laughs> and do you get new followers? You're like, what? Do they ask? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't. I don't think I've been asked it. No. No. Uh. -uh. But you know, we, we can all find you, and we we all know. We know That's all the right. Broadway fans. That's right. I always like to bring it back to the show. So, Maria Rosetta, it's on through October the 16th, so everybody needs to get down to Linda Gross Theatre. That's really good. Um, why do you think it speaks to people? Goodness, I think it's because it's a play about love. Um, I'm realizing that everything I'm talking about is like kind of on the hippy-dippy scale, but, um, but I think that's what's so cool about this play, is it's a play that, um, again, involves a, a debate of the minds, um, but ultimately it's about two people trying to find comfort in another person, and I think we can all relate to that. Um, and it's also, the music is badass. I mean, it's these two, like, old-timey ladies, you know, churchy ladies who are rocking your faces off. I mean, really, the music kicks ass, so... Well, so everybody get yourself to see it and have a wonderful evening live at Five as we will see you tomorrow. Rebecca Naomi Jones, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Good night. Bye.